A patient today asked about second generation neuroleptics, and specifically they just wanted to know what that meant, second generation neuroleptics. First generation neuroleptics came about in 1950 with the introduction of Thorazine or Chlorpromazine, which is an antipsychotic used to treat schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. And a class of medications, the first generation antipsychotics, really focused on blocking the D2 receptor in the mesolimbic pathway uh, of the brain in schizophrenia, where hyperactivity of dopamine causes uh, hallucinations and delusions and other symptoms. Second generation neuroleptics came about with the introduction of clozaril or clozapine in about 1958 or 1959. And uh, clozaril is a medication that works to not only block the D2 receptor um, in the mesolimbic pathway of, um, of the limbic system of the brain, but it also works on several serotonergic receptors and other receptors as well. And this medication has a lower risk of some of the more significant side effects with your first generation medications, like a lower risk of tardive dyskinesia, which is a potentially permanent movement disorder, and a lower risk of EPS, uh, which includes symptoms like Parkinsonism, um, akathisia, dystonias, uh, and other symptoms as well. One of the reasons why not everyone is put on clozaril or clozapine then um, is because it does have, like all psychiatric medications, some potential for significant side effects. And uh, I do want to say that when this medication came about in 1958 or 59, it really did seem like quite a breakthrough because a lot of patients that weren't responding to your first generation meds were responding to, to clozaril. It's still thought of as one of the most effective, if not the most effective antipsychotic that we have. However, um, along with working rather well for a great deal of patients, it also carries a pretty significant risk for a few, a few serious um, side effects. One of them is something called uh, neutropenia, which can lead to a granulocytosis, so really a plummeting of white blood cell counts in your body, really jeopardizing your immune system and your, ability, your body's ability to fight off um, infections. And so when someone starts on Clozaril, and while they're maintained on Clozaril, they actually need to be registered with the National Registry to make sure that they are getting routine blood work because it can be very dangerous if someone has neutropenia or a granulocytosis and it's not recognized and the offending agent isn't stopped. Clozaril or clozapine can also really increase risk for significant seizures and seizure disorders. Um, and there are obviously there are other side effects as well. So it can be an extremely effective medication, um, but also has its risks. And medic when we found out that clozaril or clozapine caused many patients that did not respond to first generation medications to do rather well, we thought, all right, we're going to make a, a whole new class and we're going to call it the second generation neuroleptics or antipsychotics, or that's what it became known as. And those are medications just like clozaril that don't just focus on D2 blockade. They focus on um, and they affect not only dopamine receptors, but various uh, serotonin receptors as well. And um, we found that those medications now not only treat psychosis, but many of them are, are FDA approved in uh, mood disorders and can even off-label to help with anxiety. And some of them now actually are on-label and are FDA approved for anxiety as well.